Hello and welcome to the V-Ray for SketchUp series. In this episode, we'll create a night interior scene from start to finish. In the previous episode, we explored the V-Ray camera and the various settings you can use to enhance the realism in your renders. Before we start today's tutorial, I want to remind you that you can find the scene we're working on for download in the video description below, together with the scene assets. Grab them for free so you can practice at your own pace. My goal for this tutorial will be to show you how to approach lighting and post-processing an interior scene from start to finish. We'll also briefly go over the techniques we've already covered in previous tutorial episodes. So buckle up and let's start. The first thing we're going to do is add render elements that will help us in the post-production stage. I'll add the Back to Beauty, Cryptomat and Light Mix render elements. If you're not sure what these elements do, please check out the compositing tutorial. You can find it in the playlist to the right of this video. Now let's start an interactive render and see what is the state of our image. For this tutorial, we'll create an evening shot that will have multiple artificial light sources that accent different areas of our interior. So let's start off by creating the base for our night scene. We'll turn off the sun and add a dome light. In the texture slot, we will apply a night sky texture from the Chaos Cosmos. The dome light will act as our fill light. To compensate for the lack of light in the scene, I will tweak the exposure value from the camera settings. I will also add a bit of depth of field to create some depth in our image. For the lighting of our interior scene, we will use different types of techniques. So far, we added a dome light, which will act as our base. Next, we need a key light. A key light is the main light source in the scene. We usually place it first so we can create a focal point in our composition. In this situation, our key light will be the lamp above the table. So let's create a rectangular light and add it just below the light body. Note that we will add a white color to every light source, because we'll use the light mix render element to add their color. Let's change the lamp shape to a disc so it better fits the lamp source. Then we'll make the lamp invisible and add some directionality. Great! We have light coming from the lamp. But how does a lamp work without a light bulb? To simulate the light bulb, we can create a sphere light and leave it visible. Now that we have our main light, we can start thinking of ways to complement the rest of the interior. Right now everything except the table looks very flat. That's because it's lit with the same amount of light intensity. We can change that by adding some highlights to the dark areas of our assets. In the real world, there are different light sources that can affect an interior, which means that objects will receive a lot of reflections. Reflections are one of the most important tricks to add highlights and realism to your scene. To create such highlights, we'll add a rectangular light and position it on the side of the table. This light could be coming from the TV. You will notice that we immediately start getting some highlights on the chairs. Now let's increase the directionality so the amount of light is focused only on the table area. I think we're almost there. All that's left is the dark spot in the background. Something our image still lacking is depth. So let's add a sphere light and increase its intensity just a bit, so it doesn't overcome our main light source. When we feel like we're ready with the lighting, let's open the right panel of the VFP and add some color and intensity to our lights. For our main lamps, I'll use warmer tones around 2700 to 3000 kelvins. For the rest of the light sources, I'll stay in the cooler tones. Now that we have the proper colors for our light sources, let's add lens effects. Let's increase the bloom and glare effect and turn on the aperture shape which will give us the star shape effect that we usually see when we look at very bright light sources. Before we do the color corrections, I would like to add a vignetting effect to our image, as I think it will be even more beneficial in solidifying the focal point. For the color corrections, we'll add a filmic tone mapper to balance the shadows and the highlights, as well as an exposure correction to add back some light to our shot. I'll also add a white balance correction, so we have control over the warm and cold tones. Finally, I'll add a bit of saturation to make all the colors pop. Now I would like to enhance some of our materials by using the Cryptomat render element. I personally think that the chairs are attracting too much attention, 
because they are very saturated and do not fit the color scheme of the other assets. So let's add a hue saturation correction and use a cryptomat mask to select only the chairs. I'll tweak the correction until I feel like they are matching the rest of the interior. The final correction I would like to make is on the table material. Because the table material is very reflective, the light coming from the light bulb has created this very bright spot on the table. One way of solving this is by changing the reflection parameter and re-rendering the image. But let me show you a faster solution. We can use the render elements we have added with Back to Beauty and fix the table material in the composite source. Let's click the To Composite option and add a render element. Then let's create a mask for the table material. In the element dropdown, we'll select Specular and change the blending mode to Subtract. This will reverse the amount of specular highlights our object is receiving. So by increasing the multiplier, the very exposed parts of the table will be minimized. And if the highlight is still too exposed, don't forget that you have access to our light sources in the composite mode so you can continue tweaking them until you feel satisfied with the look. And with this final correction, this episode has come to an end. In this episode, I demonstrated how I approach lighting and post-processing an interior shot from start to finish. I used only techniques which we've gone over in this tutorial series, so if you're interested in getting a better understanding of certain V-Ray features, please check the playlist on the right. I hope you found this information useful and you'll use some of these tips in your own personal work. Thank you for being part of the Vray experience.